I have always wanted to take a full walk across the field behind me at Vicksburg. This is my favorite place at Vicksburg, and I've never done it, and I figure Vicksburg 160 is the time, so here we go. All right, so here we go. For a little orientation here, this is a long post-war structure known as the Superintendent's House. Guess who lived there? I'm gonna give you one guess. And off to my right here, you're seeing some of uh, the Union entrenchments, uh, Logan's division. Uh, you know, Logan's guys attacked uh, uh, on the 19th of May, then on the 22nd of May. Then after that, there was more dedicated siege operations where they're gonna move trenches closer and closer, zigzagging, using sap rollers, getting a little bit closer um, toward the Confederate lines, which you can see in the distance. When you see the red signs, those are Confederate uh, signs. When you see the blue ones, those are Union. Uh, Vicksburg is really easy to understand because of that simple color coding system. You might see off to the right there, uh, the Shirley House or Wexford Lodge. So it's cool getting this new view of it because I've never quite descended uh, this far here. And of course, you can see the Illinois Monument uh, built in 1906, consuming a full one fifth of the entire state budget of Illinois for the year. Of course, when every state legislature in the country is practically uh, populated by Civil War veterans, they were able to do things like that at the time. Oh man, and this declivity is a pretty steep descent. I'm not sure if I'm gonna film my whole walk because I have to look at the camera and walk at the same time. Um, but note, I like this, that as I get closer, um, you know, the Confederate position is disappearing from my view. Let's give a pause right here and see what I can see right here in the first, at least the first bottom land. I assume this will not be the last. So I can see, no wonder it's such a good view from the Illinois Monument. When you look from there, I can see Wexford Lodge. A lot of the other rest of the Union position is disappearing from my view. I can see Battery de Gaulier over there, where a tenth of the Union cannons, I think, uh, for this um, siege uh, were positioned. I can see a little branch that seems to end right here. And I'm going to continue up. I'll be back with you shortly. Now we can see better coming into view. Those red signs might be a little bit more visible. What we're looking at in the distance is more to the right, the third Louisiana Redan. A Redan is a uh, fortress structure that is not enclosed on the back and it's usually triangular, but uh, sometimes they called the semicircular ones more commonly known as lunettes. Um, Redans as well, redoubts are when they are enclosed in the back. And then you have on the left, the great redoubt. Uh, this was an important position right on top of the uh, ridge over here. You can see the cars. That is the trace of the old Jackson Road. And the Jackson Road at the time was the road between Jackson and Vicksburg. So they wanted to make sure the Confederates that they fortified and protected this well. And so they did between that third Louisiana Redan and the uh, Great Redoubt. And the Great Redoubt, that I'm pretty sure you're looking at part of right in front of you here, is situated on the highest point in the entire county. I believe this is Warren County. So let's take a look back past Superintendent's Lodge and back over um, toward the Union position. You can see we've advanced a good deal of the way. Now, it's my understanding that uh, on May 19th and 22nd, uh, that the Union didn't so much advance through this field. This was just a killing field. So they put a lot of cannons over there. It seemed like the safest way to get at the enemy was to shroud it in smoke and advance along the old Jackson Road over there to get at the Confederates as quickly as possible because this just seemed like death to come toward it. Look at this. For my part, if they did advance here, I might feel pretty safe staying right about here. Maybe if the Confederates had some mortars, and I'm not sure if they did, they could drop them here, but this is a pretty safe approach. And I have little doubt that when the siege operation commenced, especially throughout the month of June, as the Union was inching ever closer toward um, the Confederate line, that they got this close and considerably closer by using sap rollers, um, thick uh, uh, contraptions that had hay, straw, cotton, or whatever they could, whatever would stop a bullet, and they could be eight feet thick. So they could advance uh, a certain number of uh, pioneers behind the sap roller and get right toward 
the Confederate position without them doing much. They could also advance their trenches by zigzagging forward um, with a lot of that work going on at night when the Confederates couldn't see what was going on. The Union also erected a tower um, known as the Coonskin Tower, somewhere over in that uh, area. Um, the guy, I think his name is Foster, was nicknamed Coonskin, so it's Coonskin's Tower um, uh, that is going to be able to observe the Confederate positions a little bit better. Supposedly, U.S. Grant went up there and reminiscent of Abraham Lincoln at Fort Stevens when maybe Oliver Wendell Holmes, maybe someone else, maybe nobody, said, get down, you damn fool. And Grant was summarily sort of ordered down by a member of his army saying that he was putting himself in too much danger. And the commanding general of the Union Army stepped off the tower. I'll take a little pause to steal myself for this next climb. recommend this for most people, by the way, <laughs> um, uh, especially while you're holding a camera. But this is a real deal um, hike here. I'm going to make it even more real deal by descending to the bottom before I go back up. Here with the American Battlefield Trust for Vicksburg 160. Hope you're enjoying this uh, little walk that I didn't know I was going to take and therefore without a windscreen. Another thing I'm doing while I'm walking is watching out for wildlife and namely snakes. So most people aren't snake people and assuming you're not a snake person, uh, you know, you certainly might want to think twice about doing this, especially between, you know, say February or March and November um, when they seem to be out more. So uh, I'd watch that as well. Here's another place where I'm feeling pretty secure if I'm a Union soldier. That, by the way, is Andrew Hickenlooper. He's, I believe, for this core here, um, or for Logan's division, the chief engineer. And he is helping to engineer these sap rolling operations to get closer to the Confederates. And so they did. I'm gonna angle back toward the road because that's where the Union would end up exploding a mine later. Once they got close enough, let me pause for a second. Once they got close enough, um, they're close enough to dig a mine under the Confederates. Uh, one of more than 10 mines that were dug, uh, but these two, this one was actually exploded twice to try to blow a hole in the third Louisiana Redan that I think is going to burst upon our view up here, so I'll keep rolling. I see where we are. We are in or above the road cut of the Jackson Road. And when the Union made their attempt um, on this position, I think this is during the explosion of the first mine, the Union soldiers actually, the dead and wounded stacked up and actually uh, prevented the soldiers from getting by. They formed a natural blockade of battle casualties. So we're looking in toward the marked Confederate position. You could see the edge of it there of the third Louisiana Redan. Some advanced cannons over there. And I can't recall off the top of my head who beside the third Louisiana is there, but it's not just them. I think I'm going to wrap it up here. We're now looking toward, my understanding is the Great Redoubt. Um, so you can see the high ground in the distance and how commanding it was and now looking back from the confederate position how you must have felt pretty secure as a southerner back behind these fortifications thinking that the enemy would have to be insane to cross that uh, i did it with some difficulty in total security other than the possibility of snakes so it's another way that we can help bring the battlefield closer to you but if you are able if you have the means make the trip to vicksburg because I know this is not showing up, even down in the bottom, even from way up here looking down, as nearly as well as it does in person. This is truly a wildly impressive place.